Hi everyone, I'm Jason Lawler, founder of Lawler Pickups here. And I'm Mike Wool. I work in customer service at Lawler Pickups. In this video series, we're going to be talking about some of the more common questions we get from customers and breaking down how guitar electronics function. We'll also wade through years of form fodder to sift out the truth from the myths to help you be better equipped with the information you need to choose the best components for your individual needs. Hey everybody, Mike here with Lawler Pickups. Today we'll be talking about some basic tips for using a soldering iron. Since almost all the products we sell will be soldered at some point, it's in everyone's best interest to help make sure customers are using the right tools and techniques for a straightforward installation. Many of our customers have an interest in working on their own instruments. It's fun, economical, and rewarding to see the results when you've done your own work. While most of our customers are comfortable with basic tools like screwdrivers, pliers, and wrenches, customers who haven't used a soldering iron before are sometimes intimidated by the process. And while there are a few do's and don'ts involved, which we'll go over with you, it really is pretty much as simple as heating something up and melting solder onto it. We want to show you that with some simple, inexpensive equipment, a little patience, and the willingness to try something new that there's nothing to be hesitant about. Many people can learn the basics in just a few minutes and be on their way to installing pickups and electronic components in their own instruments. Before we get started with the basics of soldering technique, let's take a look at the equipment and tools we'll need. Okay, so we'll review the tools that we're going to need for our soldering demo. First, we have our soldering station. This is a professional model that we use here at Lawler. So yours at home might look a little different, but importantly, it has the soldering iron and tip. This is for cleaning the tip. You might have a uh, brass or a kitchen sponge at home. This area is for knocking away the excess. We have our solder here. Generally, we recommend 60-40 tin lead, but you can use whatever you have available that's intended for soldering electronic components. We have our solder sucker or desoldering pump and desoldering braid. We have our helping hand for holding components in place, pliers that always come in handy, and our components, a pot and capacitor that we'll be soldering today. So that you can work cleanly and safely, you'll want to work in a tidy, organized space with good light and ventilation. Solder produces fumes that are toxic, so it's best to open a window and use a fan or carbon fume extractor. A soft, padded work surface like a yoga mat will help keep your instrument from slipping and protect the finish. And as soldering irons generate a lot of heat, be careful when working around any flammable material. First off, since many of our customers are replacing the existing pickups or control components in their instruments, we want to get started by showing how to desolder the original solder joints. When it comes to desoldering, you can use desoldering braid or this tool here, a solder sucker or desoldering pump. We've opted for this because it's easier and smoother and can be reused, unlike desoldering braid, which needs to be thrown away after every use. A solder sucker is just what it sounds like. It's a mechanical device that's used to remove solder. There's a few different kinds. Some have heated irons built in, so you don't need a separate soldering iron, and some have bulb pumps. Ours is a little more of a basic type. It has a plunger, a nozzle, a trigger, and a reservoir that sort of acts like a reverse syringe to remove solder. And now, to demonstrate how to use this solder sucker. To do this, you start by pressing down on the plunger to arm it for suction. Then, you just need to heat the solder to a melted pool. And then quickly, before the solder dries, press the trigger. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries. Yeah, looking good. So now for the basics. You're going to want to use the right tip. A conical tip works really well for soldering in tight spaces like an electric guitar's control cavity. This chisel tip will work just fine for today's demo. Another note is you want to make sure your soldering iron has come to correct temperature before you start. If it's too cold, it'll take too long to heat and risk damaging the components. 
With a typical consumer iron, it can take a few minutes for your iron to come to temperature, so be patient. Next, we'll pre-tin the tip before we start soldering by melting and flowing a small amount of solder, just like so. Do this on a clean tip before each use session. That helps the iron transfer heat evenly and will protect the tip from wear so that it lasts longer. When soldering, still hands are an asset. This is where a third hand or helping hand can be very useful. Keeping components stable while soldering creates the strongest joint, and iron can heat components you're holding surprisingly fast, so having a third hand can help you avoid burns as well. So we'll show you how to use this helping hand or third hand. This is just a couple of alligator clips on these articulated arms. They will help you hold your components in place, freeing up your hands to use your iron. Bring this into position just like we would want to solder it, and now we're good to go. Perhaps the most important point of this entire demo is heat the part, not the solder. This is the big one. If you simply melt the solder on the iron and try and transfer the melted solder to the cold components, it will cool too rapidly and not create a strong solder bond. This is called a cold solder joint, and it's more prone to failure. To ensure a strong solid joint, bring your iron to the lug, leg, or wire surface that you intend to solder. Heat that part, then bring the solder to it, and let the solder flow. This typically takes about three to four seconds on most surfaces with a properly heated iron. You're looking for a clean, shiny silver joint rather than a dull, cloudy, or brownish one. If the solder pool dries to a dull gray color, you most likely have a cold solder joint. It's best to reflow this joint using the proper method of heating the part, not the solder, directly with the iron. Sometimes this can be successfully done by simply reheating the part until the solder melts, allowing the pool to dry naturally. Other times, you may need to remove the previous solder using a solder sucker tool or a desoldering braid, then starting over with the solder joint. Okay, so let's begin. We're going to take the soldering iron and let it come to temp. We're going to bring the iron to the back of the pot and the leg of the capacitor and let them sit there for a while until they heat the components properly. Then we're going to bring the solder from the side, and there we go. That's a good looking solder flow there, and we have a nice clean joint. We'll clean our tip off, put that away. We see a nice shiny silver joint there. Now we're going to do the lug. Let the capacitor's leg is through, and we'll do a little pre-tinning here to make sure it transfers heat nice and evenly. And we're going to bring that to our part, heat it, bring our solder right there. There we go, it's flowing. All right. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we've done. We've got our nice clean silver solder joint here and we're attached to the lug. Looking good, nice and stable. So along with soldering technique, the most important thing to remember is safety. Be careful and aware. Soldering irons can easily reach temperatures of 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Treat an iron with respect like you would anything else with the potential to burn you or start a fire. Thanks again for watching. We hope you found this video helpful. Though we can't possibly provide technical support for every single individual installation, if you follow the instructions we've laid out in this video, you should be well on your way to installing pickups, pots, and caps in your own guitars. And as always, if you have any questions about our products, you can contact our customer service department at the email address in the description. Thanks again.